wedding photography. Guys, I shot thousands of weddings. I started shooting weddings. Well, I, I've shot video. I started in the event and photo video business at 10 years old. I'm not kidding. I started doing video. Hi8, VHS, Super VHS. And then I transitioned slowly to photography. It was easy for me to transition because I, my dad was the photographer. I was the video. It was like a father-son photo video team. Back then, when was that? Early 90s in the market, we were like... There wasn't not that many photographers and videographers out there. Well, at least in my market, there wasn't. And uh, it was fun. I started at 10 years old. <laughs> I have so many memories <laughs> from this business in the early days. You know, I'd show up with the camcorder style Panasonic AG. I forget what it was, 455, 450. It was the gray bodied VHS camcorder. And uh, I'd show up to the wedding and the groom would ask my dad if, is he the videographer? <laughs> yeah, he's the videographer. What do you think? So, but then when, I, when they see my work, when they saw the final product, they were like, dude, this kid's amazing. This kid is awesome. <laughs> so a lot of fun, a lot of good memories in the, the early days of wedding photo and video i still have my old business card i have to find it it said vahagen video <laughs> you know i always think about how if you know those old bride and grooms my old clients when i used to deliver vhs if they still have those tapes did they transfer them to digital you know it's a good question to ask because think about it 91 92 huh? how many years is that you know it's, that's a lot of decades. But yeah, I've been in this business. I've I've been to thousands of weddings. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But uh, in this video, I'm going to go over some good things about wedding photography and some bad things about wedding photography that I've experienced in how many years I've been doing this? A lot of time, long time. Now, if you're watching this video, you might be a beginner, you might be a pro, you might be just a civilian thinking about jumping into wedding photography and what it takes to actually make some money doing it. Well, I can tell you that develop your own style. You know, try to find your own niche that will help you find clients. It'll help clients find, you know, it'll help clients find you actually. Like, look at Sally's work, you know, or Brian's work. You know, only Brian does this type of wedding photography. I need Brian. Where's Brian? Or where's Sam? You get the point. So first thing you should realize or first thing you should find out Ask yourself this question before, before you get into weddings. Do you enjoy weddings? Simple question. Do you enjoy wedding? If you don't enjoy weddings, don't even think about it. Do something else. So that's one advice I can give you guys that will it'll help you figure out if you want to do this or not. So I'm going to list a few things that I think are great. And a few things that I think are negatives in, in this business. So I'm talking to all you beginners out there that are thinking about doing this. One good thing about wedding photography. Well, on the weekends, you know, so you can also you can have a functioning, successful wedding business, wedding photography business, while not quitting your day job. And what I mean by that is Monday through Friday, nine to fiver, right? You have a nine to five bank job or insurance salesmen, car salesmen, whatever. Well, not car salesmen because car salesmen need their weekends, but nine to five office job. And then when weekends come around, you're ready. 
you know, whatever you make on the weekends, in the wedding photography business, that's cherry on top. So you can actually have two jobs. So you don't have to quit your day job in order to run a successful wedding photography business. I know a lot of people that do that. One bad thing that has to you know, do with that, your weekends are not free. You're a young guy or gal, 20 years old, 25. Most of your friends, college friends, whatever, they're free on the weekends. They go to the beach on the weekends. Your girlfriend is free on the weekends. They work during the week. And what do you do? You're shooting weddings on the weekends. So be prepared to miss out on all that. You might be thinking to yourself, sure, the money's great. It's okay if I miss out on all that. The money's great. I want the money. I want the money. Show me the money, man. Show me the money. The money. <laughs> but it, it, it wears on you after a while. You know, uh, that's what happened to me in my 20s. All my friends were going out, you know, uh, and I was stuck shooting weddings with my dad. So I rebelled. I got upset. And I, I left. I left the business for a while. Be prepared to deal with. Your weekends will not be free anymore. You got kids, your kids, your, your kids will miss you, your wife will miss you. The hours, the hours sometimes are long, depend, depending on what type of wedding you shoot. Now, you could set your own guidelines when it comes to hours. You can price yourself in your packages to say, okay, this is six hours, eight hours, I don't shoot after 10 or whatever it is. And if they don't want to hire you, then go somewhere else. That's just your rules. You can make your own rules in this business, guys. The rules are not set. You're an artist. You, you know, you're a creator. You offer a service. And you should be able to dictate the way you want to run that service. So the hours might be long. Some ethnic weddings, they are long. 14 hours, 15 hours. That's a long time. Sometimes without a break. <laughs> yeah. Another good positive thing about wedding photography, you have subjects to shoot. Sometimes being a lover of photography, you have nothing to shoot and you wish you had a por portrait session or you wish you had somebody to photograph. Well, when you're doing events and, and weddings, you always have people to shoot. It's a happy time, it's a happy day. People are happy, people get drunk. One bad thing about that is you might run into conflicts. You might run into drunk people at weddings. You might run into uh, just loud music. If you're not into that, smoky rooms and, and just party central. And if you're a quiet, reserved individual, you know, this, this business might not be for you. Uh, you know, so keep that in mind, you know, because there's a lot going on at weddings. Another negative in wedding photography is that there's a lot of back-end work. It's like you, you shoot the wedding, you know, eight hours, ten hours, whatever it is. You hustle, you, you take pictures, location to location. At the end of the night, you go home, it's not over. There's a few, a few things that to realize here. There's editing to be done. 
whether you outsource it or not, a lot of photographers just to save money, and it makes it makes sense. They do all the editing themselves, and that can take m sometimes more hours and effort than actual the actual event. So be mindful of that. If you're not one of those people that like spending time in front of a computer, maybe this is not what it's you know cut out to be. So be mindful of that. A lot of dealing with customers, a lot of back and forth phone calls. If you're one of those people that are carefree, you really don't want to commit to something and you're kind of those, you know, happy go lucky kind of guys that really don't are not good at scheduling things. This business might not be for you because you have to be on your A game when it comes to scheduling. You can't mess around. You can't book a wedding and then go to Vegas on that day and forget all about it. So you have to be responsible in this business. So if you're not that type of person, wedding photography might not be for you. Okay? Just just putting it out there. One other thing to think about. If you're not the social type of person, if you're kind of private, you know, wedding photography, there's a lot of socializing. There's a lot of networking involved. You know, meeting people. So if you're like the private type of individual and you think that you're just going to go shoot the wedding, edit the images and give those images to the bride and you're done, you got another thing coming. It's not like that. You know, the bride's going to refer you to their friends. Their friends are going to call you. There's a lot of back and forth over the phone. People are going to meet you the wedding day. They want to shake your hand. So if you're the private type of person, there's a lot of socializing going on in in wedding photography. So if you're an outgoing kind of person that likes to meet people, shake people's hand, yeah, wedding photography might be great. But private types, you know, I know friends of mine that really don't like to associate with other humans. <laughs> no, really. This might not be the gig for you. Okay? Just letting you know. Being on time. Being prepared, you know, having experience, dealing with all types of people, you know, in weddings, you meet all kinds of people from all walks of life. You got the loud ones. You got the nice ones. You got the party animals. People that make a lot of racket or Get away. <laughs> adapting to different situations is key in surviving in a successful wedding photography business. The client is expected for you to know. There's no excuses. You know, oh well, I haven't shot this type of wedding. I didn't know how the ceremony went. It's not an excuse. As years go by, as you shoot more and more these weddings, you'll shoot different weddings from different cultures and you'll know what goes on. Don't limit yourself because, you know, you're going to just limit your, your photography to one specific type of audience. I'd say branch out. I'd say get to know if you have, for example, if you have never shot an Indian wedding, right? Get with. A local Indian wedding photographer asked to second shoot for that wedding. See how it goes. You know, because you'll be throwing curveballs during the wedding. So not all weddings are the same. You know, so every single wedding has a specific special thing. Surprises happen all the time. So be prepared. One other good thing about wedding photography is that you're on your own boss. You know, you, you dictate your guidelines you dictate how much you want to make another bad thing about it is that you might get burned out burnout happens all the time especially when editing happens and you have like thousands of pictures to call edit take it easy guys uh, if you need to slow down and if you need to outsource your editing do it i sometimes joke with the entertainment or the singer i go hey man you just sing you make thousands of dollars you go home and you're on to the next wedding or the dj right 
We're there. We're not done. You know, our job's just getting started. Everybody give a round of applause to the videographer. He's also a drummer. All right, guys, there's so much more wedding photography tips I can give you. There's so much more I've already done on this channel. If you search photography, wedding photography, you'll see a lot out there. And it, there's a lot of things to, to go over. There's a lot of things to learn. The business side of photography is huge when it comes to weddings. Networking is, is so important. It's hard. There's so much competition out there when it comes to weddings. Is that right? Let me comment down below. Let me know if you feel the same way. Let me know if you think that there's a lot of wedding photographers around. You know, a lot. I know a lot of them. And um, there's a lot of good ones out there. Be unique out there, guys. Take your time, learn, learn the craft, and uh, just have fun with it, you know? So leave me that comment. Let me know if you know, if you were inspiring to be a wedding photographer. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments. If I get to them, I'll answer some of your questions. For beginners, I'm an open book, guys. I've been to, I've been in every single situation when it comes to wedding photography, trust me. I can tell you stories and I've told stories on this channel. Like I said, just search Vahography Confessions of a Pro Photographer. I have, I have many stories and I haven't told yet. So I'll be telling them. You got to realize, three decades, thousands of weddings, something's bound to happen, right? <laughs> Fights, you know, breakups. Yeah, a lot of stories, guys. Anyway, thank you for watching. Good luck to you guys as beginner photographers in the wedding photography business. And uh, just have fun with it, you know. And by the way, if you see that it's not for you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't force yourself for a paycheck to be a wedding photographer. I think Sally's having fun doing it. It's easy money. I can do it. It doesn't work that way. You get burned out. You fail. So do something. Make a living on photography. You can do it. Thousands of people do it every day. But do it in a way that you're having fun doing it. You know, don't force it. Because it'll show in the photographs, you'll get burned out, and it's not a good situation at the end. So. <laughs> Do that search, because I got a lot of content on wedding photography on this channel. If this is your first time, subscribe to this channel. A lot more videos on the way. Hit that thumbs up button if you like what you hear here. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Go rock and roll the wedding photography business. There's a lot of great wedding photographers out there. A lot of successful ones out there, too. Jerry Guiones, uh, does he still do weddings? Cliff Mautner, these are all Nikon ambassadors. Nikon, Cliff Mautner's wedding photos are amazing. I, I like that guy. So, all right guys, see you later. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. We'll catch you later. Always remember, rock your wedding photography. Catch you later, bye-bye. Hey, what's good guys? Vahagan here from Vahography. If you like more photography, rock, and content like this one, go ahead and check out the videos on the screen and subscribe to this channel for more exclusive content.